Okay. Um, we were tasked, staff was tasked with putting together an informational um, piece for the proposed recreation millage. And as such, um, we've worked with the board at the last meeting uh, and, and legal counsel to kind of hone in on that verbiage that we want to share uh, with our constituents when it comes time for uh, the November vote. So, um, as a matter of fact, due to the reduced revenue sharing matters that are out of our control, our township voters will notice a recreational millage proposed on the November 3rd ballot that is intended to provide current level operation and maintenance funding for our parks and shared use pathways effectively for the next two years, right? And then you can see in the box below that language that will actually be on the ballot itself. So. This includes conservative budgeting for labor costs, materials, equipment, and administrative services required to maintain current service levels for the next two years. Um, we also wanted to give some background on who administers or provides recreation in, in the township and what our roles are. So the recreation administ administrative team, excuse me, on the left column is of course the township board who provides uh, direction to the planning commission and the Recreation Committee, Building and Grounds employees and Planning and Zoning staff support those desires. Tasks and responsibilities include property acquisition, par park and uh, property development, grant administration and applications, um, maintenance and upkeep, and then future park planning by way of our master plan and our future, uh, well, not our future land use plan, but our recreation plan. And obviously in recent years, uh, the township has acquired, developed and redeveloped recreational property for our master plan, recreation plan and community survey results. Um, probably would have been interesting to include a couple of the slides from our most recent survey, but certainly recreation is something that's highly supported um, in the community. And as well, I would say nationally, when folks are looking to locate to an area, they typically look at you know, your, what's your medical service like? How are your schools? And then what are your recreational opportunities? Uh, we've had favorable public and private partnerships as well as grant funding resources that we've taken advantage of. Um, we've developed some great relationships over the last 10 years. And residents and volunteers have also been great stewards of our parks. Obviously we wouldn't be where we are today without all of those partnerships that have been uh, fostered and nurtured over at least the course of the last 10 years. And as an example, um, these are just the business organization and or corporate sponsors, um, as well as some of our regulatory agencies, whether they be uh, state or federal. And we've utilized um, all of these partnerships to, I guess, acquire and develop the things that we have in such a short time. One thing that is uh, omitted from uh, this particular list is all of the individuals, but I didn't really think it was appropriate to include them. Some people want to remain anonymous in those scenarios. So um, these are the folks that, uh, um, that were willing to put their logo out there and be part of this. So let's talk about cost. Um, since 2011, and certainly you can see up to 2020, our projected uh, um, recreational cost. This includes everything from uh, labor to materials, um, administration, uh, those types of things. So you can see certainly within the last uh, five years for sure, um, an increase in, in the cost of, of providing those services. And partly that's due to, you know, just the amenities improving you know, more lane miles of non-motorized pathway, maybe not lane miles, but certainly increased in linear footage of non-motorized pathway. And those things require us, the grants themselves require us to maintain those in perpetuity. Um, so there are responsibilities that we have to increase our, our recreational offerings. We also have responsibilities to maintain them. 
and uh, wanted to definitely include, you know, our master planning process for the parks because, you know, these are derived from comments made at public meetings, uh, from our master planning input sessions, and from community surveys. So uh, one of the nice things about this particular master plan is that uh, minus the horseshoe pits and the 35 by 70 basketball court, um, this project has come to fruition and something that uh, as a staff member, I'm certainly proud of. And as a township board and community, everybody should be proud of. This is of course, uh, Lions Field, which is in the middle of section 16. Uh, everybody uh, in section 16 is within a, a one mile circumference of this area. And to have a historic platted park in the middle of your, you know, the highest density residential that we have is, is, is great. And uh, we've taken care of it. We brought it back to life. Um, we've, we've closed a portion of the Erie Avenue right away and uh, have, you know, increased the safety there as well as kind of blended the two sides of the park or what were formerly two sides of the park um, into one park. And these are examples of, you know, the things that we've done uh, through our partnerships, through our grant writing, uh, through uh, budgeting in the general fund over the years. So that little bit of, I wouldn't say little bit, but the money that is set aside for um, recreation has been put to good use. And these are examples of finished products. Um, and the, the landscaping picture on the middle bottom there is, uh, you know, very recent. And although they're not in full bloom, um, you can see that the nice touches that we've included um, as a part of our grant process. And those are native plantings and required um, to be native plantings. We've had great use of the parks as well. Community days, softball tournaments, live music shows, intramural hockey games, static displays by the fire department and other uh, law enforcement agencies in the area. And it brings together people, which is what, you know, at least in my job, uh, something that's very important uh, is to attract and retain families, young families, uh, old families, um, to try to give people an opportunity to live here, you know, all their lives if possible uh, and to enjoy a high quality of life. So that's what we work on. And then of course you have the Swimwood Park trailhead master plan and boy this one was massaged quite a bit over the years but we got it to its current state in 2013 as far as the master plan goes and minus the um, final phase which would be a some sort of restroom facility uh, in the expanded parking lot this project has been brought to fruition as well and you can see even in 2013 we were already foreshadowing some kind of connection to an underpass. Um, and thanks to the dedication and the hard work of a lot of people, uh, that has also been brought to fruition. So this is uh, this sign was up at the park for a long time uh, when all of the projects were kind of in phases and, and moving forward. And now we've even expanded it out to include a single track trail that will connect uh, from a portion of Lost Creek on the east side of County Road 492 will connect back through here and out to the tunnel. So it'll be a, a quick hitting trail for those who desire to get to that location. Um, yeah, it's just a great thing and, and something that we're all very proud of, I'm sure. Let's see. And these are the most recent photos from uh, the Shumway Park location. So you can see the trail that's been developed to connect the parking lot to the Iron Ore Heritage grade. And that was a challenge um, that had to be an ADA, well, as close to ADA compliant as possible. There are some steeper terrain uh, movements in there, but um, that was acceptable to the DNR for their grant program. The landscaping was installed. And of course, we've always used and created some kind of uniformity with our uh, park infrastructure, or what we call public infrastructure, uh, the recycling bins and trash um, bins and the handicap accessible uh, picnic tables. 
and of course all of our sign kiosks, which have been nicely implemented uh, by Planner Diedrichsen with some maps and uh, some interpretive signage at the park. So not only can you pull up to the park and, and hit the trail, but you can also see what's around uh, as far as food and entertainment options, um, as we're always trying to attract people off of the Iron Ore Heritage Trail and into our business community. And then shared use pathways. Um, this is another segment of our recreational offerings that uh, benefit a lot of people. And we've, you know, increased, we've seen increased usership along the corridor and on our pathways. And we've used a number of different funding mechanisms to, um, to, to you know, achieve that goal. And we're still trying to achieve uh, and, and reach out and achieve those goals. But uh, obviously with the current situation, we're just gonna try to maintain what we have for now and, and see what happens in the future. As examples here is the Iron Road Heritage Trail. This, you know, is just about this time of year, <coughs> excuse me. And uh, it's certainly a beautiful place and it attracts a lot of people. And that's kind of serves as a backbone for us. Um, and we were able to spur trails off of that to connect our community uh, to that main artery, if you will. Here is the trail that connects the Iron Heritage Trail on the south uh, to the tunnel on the north. And here's the other half of that photo, if you will, flip the other way. Here's the tunnel going underneath. So you have safe passage for both snowmobiles and non-motorized transportation in the summer. And then you have a pathway now that extends all the way down to Wright Street um, on the north side of the highway. So folks can come from Bishop Woods or along the Iron Ore Heritage Trail and, and get right into our community, uh, the community business district um, safely and um, with a dedicated pathway. And then of course on the bottom left, you see what is the uh, fire hall here on the southwest corner and the township hall in the northeast corner of this particular segment of road, which is Commerce, Moran, and Venture. And you'll see on the, on the north side of the highway here, the Safe Routes to School pathway, which was a federal program that we received. So when the residents see this, they don't really understand all the different pieces of the puzzle that come together uh, to make, they just see a pathway and, th and that's fine. Um, but staff and, and you know, our, our volunteers are always working to locate and find areas that, uh, of funding that we can utilize to improve our non-motorized network. And of course, we have some national recognition with the uh, North Country Trail and some light infrastructure in the uh, Shromit Park property with a walking bridge that is currently uh, being uh, improved by MTN as a result of our partnership with them. So the recreation millage proposal is in response to a number of factors, but it certainly increased demand for recreational opportunities um, in the township increased demand for park facility maintenance and upkeep. Um, big box retail revenue reductions, uncertainty of COVID impact on the state of Michigan sales tax reimbursement, which is a revenue sharing source that the township benefits from. And we're also trying to avoid the, deter the deterioration, excuse me, of um, and the maintenance of our recreational assets we currently have. And that's the last slide. So we wanted to put this out there, uh, present this to the board, and then whoever watches the board meeting, obviously they'd have an opportunity. And I'm gonna stop my share for a minute and I'm gonna share one more screen with you. Let's see. If I can get back to it. I apologize for the delay. Something happened here. There it is. So what we're hoping, or if the board is um, in agreement, we would include this verbiage, which is language taken essentially from the 
the presentation I just gave you and put it on the back of a utility bill or a separate mailer at some point uh, prior to the election here. Basically, here's the language. Um, this recaps essentially what we just discussed. And then these are examples um, of impact to your property taxes based on your uh, home value. I did run these through uh, our assessor. She concurred with uh, the approximate numbers. I mean, they're basically rounded. It was $2.11 or $4.30 if it's rounded. Uh, if it's closer to the nearest dollar, it went down. And if it was above you know, 50 cents, it went up to the next dollar. So they're very accurate. And, um, and then of course we wanted to make this available. If people wanted more information, they could go to our website and there would be a link to the presentation, which I just gave in a PDF format so that those folks could, that didn't see this or, you know, they, they got this in the mail, they'd be able to go and, and then get the, the further information, which we believe kind of breaks it down a little bit further in, in the PDF that I just provided to you with. 